Hello, uh, my name is Adam Szczecówka. I am a software developer at SAP Labs Poland. Also, I write in Go for two and a half years. Today, I would like to answer the question why uh, software developers, architects, decide to choose Go more and more often. Uh, but before we do that, let's go very briefly to the, some success stories where Go was used. So let's start with the Docker, a tool which needs no introduction. Docker is the tool that changed the way how we deliver our applications. Next example is Kubernetes, a system which gained a lot of interest recently. Uh, Kubernetes is a system for automating deployment, scaling, and management of containerized applications. Next example is Cloud Foundry, the cloud application platform. Cloud Foundry made it easier to test, build, deploy, and scale applications. Uh, in Go, uh, there are some uh, databases written. So first example is InfluxDB. InfluxDB is time series database. Uh, InfluxDB is uh, used for storing some kind of timestamp data, which usually are used for um, application metrics, IoT sensor data, and real-time analytics. Next example is etcd. It is a key value store for the most critical data of distributed system. For example, Kubernetes and Cloud Foundry store in etcd configuration. Uh, we can find also examples of the messaging system written in Go. Here we have the uh, NAT server. Uh, we need to be also aware that uh, many cloud providers, such as uh, Microsoft Azure, Google Cloud Platform, AWS, Heroku, has at least part of the infrastructure uh, written in Go. In 2014, Donnie Berkholz called Go as a new language for the cloud infrastructure. And I think we have to agree with that thesis. Uh, there are many examples of microservices uh, written in Go. Here we have a screen from the blog fr uh, from Uber, where they uh, write that the highest query per uh, second service is written in Go. So that's, uh, now let's return to the question, why? developers decide to choose uh, Go. What are the key features of that language? There is a very nice page uh, on the GitHub uh, called Why Go, uh, where we can find the list of the examples from different companies where they describe why they um, decide to choose Go to migrate to Go. I go through that list and I was trying to find some conclusions and what appears the most frequently. So I found four factors. First is the simplicity. Uh, there is a great uh, blog post by Rob Pike, the co-author of the language, Less is Exponentially More, uh, where he described the philosophy of that language. Uh, Go has very simple syntax, similar to other uh, popular uh, languages. This uh, simple syntax uh, is uh, easy to learn. There is a uh, few keywords. For example, there is only one kind of loop, for, uh, so while, do while, uh, don't exist at, at all. Uh, I, as I said, it's easy to learn. So some people say that it requires a uh, few weeks uh, to gain uh, enough knowledge to be efficient. And it's also important from the business perspective. So let's assume that uh, in your company you want to write some new code in the Go. So in the recruitment process, you do not have to uh, think only about the experienced developers, uh, but also people who want to learn are also an option. In Go, very important is orthogonality. What does it mean? So the authors of the language do not want to add uh, new features for um, too many new features. So they uh, want to have such situation that uh, given functionality is implemented only in one way. And interesting story was uh, told by the uh, Jim Plush. In his company, they wrote services in the Scala. A break breakthrough happened when a critical bug appeared on the production. Uh, and fixing that problem took hours instead of minutes. And the reason was following. The author of the code was on vacation and his uh, colleagues couldn't work out what this mysterious piece of code is really doing. So in the Jim's mind, uh, red flags uh, rise up. 
um, they, didn't, uh, they didn't give up Scala, but they use a lot of Go currently. So the, according to Jim, the problem with Scala is uh, following. The same piece of code can be implemented in many different ways, and sometimes only uh, the code is readable only for the author of that code. So um, in Go, um, Go is in a comp composite, uh, complete opposition. Uh, so um, authors claim that they do not want to compete with uh, other languages on a number of features. Uh, features hate, uh, hurt readability and they add complexity. Okay, uh, next advantage of Go is a great standard library. We need to be aware that uh, many pop currently popular languages uh, were um, created in the 90s. So, for example, uh, Python was created in 1991, uh, Java in 1995, and Go was released in 2009. And I hope you agree with me that the prog programs which we write currently differs from those written in the 90s. And thanks to that, that Go was created much later, it has great support, for example, for the network programming, for writing tests and benchmarks. Here we have an uh, example of the um, HTTP server, the, the simplest example. So what we have to do? We need to import one package, namely a net HTTP. Then in the main function, we define our handler. Handler is a, just a function which accepts uh, re response writer and request. Then we have to start our server, so we call listen and serve when we specify the port on we, which we listen on. And that's all. But what is the best about this example? That we do not have any dependencies. No uh, additional frameworks, no libraries, and so on. We use standard library. And in the community, it's um, write the code in exactly that, that way. So they try to use as much as possible of standard library. They do not want to add frameworks and so on. And by the way, compilation of this tiny HTTP server was less than one second on my computer. Re uh, average response time was 200 uh, microseconds and memory usage was below two megabytes. Uh, in the standard library, we have support for writing tests. To write a test, you need to just create a method with the proper signature. So it has to start with the test, uh, and then it has to accept uh, one parameter. Um, but what is nice about writing tests is that um, when you want to ex um, run your test, you can specify some flags. First flag I would like to mention is the count flag. Uh, this flag allows us to specify how many times every test will be run. And thanks to that, we can, for example, find the, the problematic tests which are unstable. Mm, the second flag which we can specify is the race. And the race allows us to detect race conditions. You can see the output f uh, on the uh, right-hand side. And we can also write a benchmark thanks to the standard library. Writing a benchmark is uh, quite similar to writing a test. We need to specify just uh, proper uh, name of the method yeah, and accept uh, one parameter. Benchmarks, we use benchmarks for comparing the performance on uh, mm, some algorithms. And the best thing about writing benchmarks in Go is that the responsibility of the Go runtime to run your benchmark enough time to get reliable results. Okay, uh, next uh, important feature of Go is the concurrency. Uh, in Go, we use Go routines, where in the other many other programming languages um, we are using threads. So what is the dif difference? Uh, Go is so-called lightweight thread, green thread. So it means it, uh, it uh, doesn't map one-to-one -to, -one to the uh, system thread. Creating Go routine is much cheaper than creating a thread. So, for example, it requires three CPU instructions, and the stack takes a few kilobytes. And let's compare it to the thread, where in thread, uh, um, stack has half of megabyte, in case of Mac OS, and it takes uh, 90 microseconds. And we can uh, create thousands of Go routines in our uh, code, 
which won't be possible in the, in the case of creating threads. Threads has some limitations. First, uh, operating system limit the number of uh, threads uh, every pro program can request, and also it will take much uh, much more time to run our code concurrently. We need to just precede our method name with the go keyword, and that's all. And when we want to communicate, we use channels. So let's imagine that one go routine want to uh, communicate somehow with the second go routine, and uh, so uh, the mm, best approach is to send message via channel from one go routine to the second one. Uh, so there is a, um, some advice that we should not communicate by sharing memory. We should instead share memory by communicating. And the last thing I would like to mention is stability of the language and at the same time its uh, development. Uh, here we have a um, page uh, which describes uh, Go in version 1, and the most important thing is the last sentence. We can s uh, uh, read that the API may grow, acquiring new packages and features, but not in the way that it breaks existing Go1 code. So they promise to keep uh, Go1 backward compatible. So it's very important from the business perspective. Uh, but uh, at the same time, I would say that the release cycle of Go is still quite fast. So, for example, in the last two years, we get two new releases uh, per, uh, every year. And in every release, something interesting was added. First example is the improvements in the garbage collector. So here we can see the garbage collector post time and how it was reduced in the next uh, versions. So in this uh, version 1.5, they reduce it from 300 milliseconds to something below 100 milliseconds. In the next release, they reduce it to the something below 10 milliseconds. In the uh, version 1.7, it was something about 3 milliseconds, and finally in 1.8, below 1 millisecond. So they reduce this garbage collection post time from 300 milliseconds to 1 millisecond. So for me, it's, it's quite impressive. Uh, also, what was uh, added recently uh, is uh, um, cache for the test results. It was added in the version uh, 1.10. Uh, so um, let's assume situation that you um, modify your code in the package which uh, other packages uh, um, don't depend on. So um, if you run test uh, for the whole your program, uh, test will be rerun only for your package, and for other packages, uh, go um, runtime will reuse the uh, results from the previous run. And uh, thanks to that, um, we can reduce time for running tests. So I found an information that uh, in the Terraform, they reduce that time from uh, 3 minutes to uh, 40 seconds. So to sum up, um, what are the strengths of the goal? First of all, this simplicity. Next, great standard library, support for concurrency, and stability, but also the continuous development. But it's, there is no silver bullet, as we can hear on other presentations. So context is important. It means that not in every case, Go will be the best choice uh, to use. So, for example, Go has no generic types. In some cases, it can slow down your development. Uh, but still, I would like to encourage all of you mm, to give it a try. Thank you.